Hello and welcome to Synchronicity Talk Radio for your mind, body, and soul. I'm your host, Marie Bernard, and I'm joined by... Me? <laughs> Chris Gaskin? <laughs> Chris Gaskin today. Uh, you just bail on the intro? What, what I happened? I looked at you. Oh, okay. I was letting you, you looked... introduce yourself. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Doing a radio thing and she's looking over. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Chris and I did uh, an interview the other day. What was it? Wednesday? Something. Anyway, the other day we did an interview on Google Hangouts on Air with uh, a couples therapist, a uh, couples coach. Her name is Dr. Susan Campbell, and mm-hmm. she is the co-author of the book Five Minute Relationship Repair, which uh, we've had on the show a few times. We've had her co-author, John Gray, as well. So she did – oh, that door's going to slam shut. Boom. Okay. So she did a, a couple therapy session with us on Google Hangouts on Air, which you can find at youtube.com forward slash spiritual show. Um, and the name of it, if you want to look for it, is Couples Therapy Session with Su- Susan Campbell, Five Minute Relationship Repair. And uh, you can search for that on YouTube if you want to watch the rest of it. It's longer than an hour. So what we figured we would do is play some of the clips. Yeah. And then talk about it and stuff. So what what do you uh is there anything you want to say about this interview before we pick a clip to play? Yeah. Yeah? Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Okay. Um Okay, so let's start out with how Dr. Campbell sets up the therapy session with okay. a few tips and reasons for this session today and we'll see how that goes. Something about the territory here, what we're what we're hoping to get across to people. One of the things that usually robs couples of the deepest happiness they could have is those periodic moments when somebody gets their button pushed, or we also call it getting triggered. You know, the feeling like I gotta get out of here or this panic that I did something wrong or we've lost the love that we had. You know, those moments when something just comes out of your mouth or your partner's mouth and it's very upsetting. So we call that getting triggered. So we're gonna explore that territory today with Chris and Marie. Awesome, well we get triggered a lot less often now but it still happens. Yeah. Uh, It just happened the other day. Mm-hmm. But thanks to five minute relationship repair, we're handling it so much better. Oh, so yeah. I'm so happy to hear that. That's a bit of an understatement, but you know, uh, yeah, a lot better. Yeah. You're really doing good. I get that. I'm I'm extremely happy to be with you now so we can hear about some of the things you've learned. But first I want to reassure our audience that even if you get better at handling triggers, the goal here is not to avoid ever getting triggered. That's a little too high a bar for most people. It's better if our goal is to repair as quickly as possible. Once you learn how to repair in a loving, efficient way, that's why we call the book Five Minute Relationship Repair, then you're not so afraid of getting triggered and then it's less hurtful to your to your own inner being and you say less hurtful things to your partner you kind of know how to mitigate triggers and also you don't blame your partner so much because you're not going into this heavy duty pain trauma that we sometimes do go into when we get triggered by our partner so the more practice you have and we're going to learn about this from Chris and Marie, the easier it'll be to just take triggers in stride. So uh, we, after this this clip we went into, we talked about a recent trigger. Yeah. Uh, but what I noticed and what you noticed, it was mostly me and Susan talking, right? You didn't really have a chance to, to say much. No, and I think like leading into what we were doing with this video is it it was going to be originally uh, you doing a trigger and then me talking about a trigger and it it ended up we focused almost solely on your trigger just because of the amount of time 
that we had allotted. So, I, I mean, it's not something – like I remember you and I were talking about it and you were like, oh, I'm really sorry. And I was like, it's fine. Like it, it, I totally – I'm conscious about the amount of time that we had allotted for the interview. I'm aware that I, I would assume uh, Dr. Campbell is, you know, a very busy woman. So, you know, I, I don't want to really ruin her time there. So it, it wasn't something that actually bothered me all that much. Uh, but I know the way that we were setting it up originally before we started recording the actual interview it was going to be that. But I had no problem working on that because the, the whole idea of the show realistically is to promote five-minute relationship repair, which I think is a good tool. And it's something that I said during um, that interview that's on YouTube, if you watch the whole thing, is one of the things that I mentioned is we don't quite use it by the book. We kind of use it as a guideline for what we do as a couple. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things you can go to five minute relationship repair.com and it's all spelled out in words, F I V E, five minute relationship repair.com, and you can get a copy, a free copy of like a workbook. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, the book itself takes you through all of the information and you you get to learn the tools a lot more but one of the useful things in the in the little workbook is that it gives you sort of like a cliff notes. Mm -hmm. What? What are you doing? <laughs> um, My legs are dangling. You, it Chris, gives you cliff notes. Chris oh, has this comedy bit where he dangles his feet, and so that was reminding me of that. Oh, okay. Okay, so did you want to talk about one of your triggers on the show? Or is it safe to do that without a therapist there as a referee? <laughs> <laughs> Well, seeming as I used to referee pro wrestling, I think I could referee myself over here. Can you? Well, what about me? You're pretty good at refereeing me too. I am very good at refereeing you. All right, let's not let's not jump ahead over here. Um, well, I I mean it was just basically like my and I'm here's the thing is honestly I'm not a huge fan of the word trigger, but I mean I I think it makes sense for what's going on because you know it's something that you, you kind of it's kind of pulled and just everything kind of explodes right at that second. You know what I mean? What word would you use instead of trigger? I don't think I'd use a word. I, I think, uh, I, I'm just more of a, let's try to figure it out type of person. But I mean, you know, this, this five minute relationship repair and like Dr. Stan cat or Stan Tatkin's stuff, like that's helped us out so much and helped me learn a lot myself. But it's like, when when all was said and done, by the time we got everything going as good as we have, I, I mean, it's basically been like a hybrid of everything that you learn, which I think realistically makes sense as far as life goes. But I mean, my trigger itself was just you mentioning uh, something about like finding another boyfriend or something and and it wasn't even you t and the funny thing is i totally recognize this situation i recognize that you were talking about how you would have been in the past and where we are now but it was just you saying those words kind of got me like oh my god like i might lose this woman that i love mm -hmm. very dearly and and it you know it was just something where i was i was afraid of that and i totally understand where that feeling came from so it was like i i dealt with it so fast that by the time you were like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm totally okay. I recognized what happened. I was able to deal with it. And I I didn't actually need to deal with it as a couple at that moment because, like I said, I, I recognized that was just the feeling in me, which is part of what five-minute relationship repair helps you do. So just to clarify, because I was going to play a clip of me saying something similar. Are you yeah. talking about the night before when we had that yes. conversation? Yes. Okay. Because I also was describing something in the interview, which I think I'll play about 36 minutes into the interview. Okay. I didn't realize. It's interesting because we're having this conversation and I'm talking about how I might have reacted in the past or what what happens to me when my feelings of abandonment come up. My, my fear of abandonment comes up. So we don't have to call it a trigger. We can call it fear of abandonment. Yeah. Um, 
But I realized after when I looked back at the video, I, I, I could see that I was a little bit emotional, even in, in describing it. And then as I, I saw the look on your face, and it was like a punch in the gut, and neither one of us um, nobody in the interview stopped and, and pointed it out. Um, I guess because, I mean, it just happened so quickly. And, and But I saw the, the reaction on your face. And before I play this clip, I forgot to say that this is synchronicity. Did I say that already? Yeah, you did. Oh, okay. But I didn't say that this is CITR 101.9 <laughs> FM and we're broadcasting from unceded Musqueam territory in Vancouver on the University of British Columbia campus. I did not say that. No, but... It's important. We got to it, yeah. Yeah. It's very important. It's very important. Okay. So uh, we, because there's the first time I describe it. And then the second time when I'm more emotional and I basically just punch you in the face with my okay. abandonment. Like I'd have to actually watch the clip to see my reaction. Do you want to see it? Reaction. If, if that's what you wanted to bring up right away. Yeah, absolutely. Are you ready for it? Sure, I'm okay. ready for it. Uh, 3610. really prefer texting over phone conversation it's just i greatly prefer seeing each other yeah but if i don't see yeah. you for three days and i've i mean i've literally got a new guy by then like you're on your own buddy if, if i don't see you like if we can't because even on the phone mm -hmm. we have um like tone of voice is so important yeah. and because chris mm -hmm. processes a, more slowly than i do i mean it's it's better Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time, it's not enough. We've, I mean, now we we're able to slow it down a little bit more, mm -hmm. um, and so we can usually work through things over the phone. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, eight months ago, even on the phone, it would still escalate. I yeah. think. Yeah. Okay. Well, Chris is watching this, and he says he doesn't he doesn't see it. I think. I think uh, my mic, sweetie. Oh, wrong mic. Yeah, there we go. All right, now we got my mic on. Uh, <laughs> I I think it's, I was kind of expecting like the Ralph Wiggum. And you see his heart torn out in three, two, one. And that's not really, uh, I, I think, I think you're picking up on such a, like a, a minute detail in my face that like, I don't, I don't see it. But Dr. Stan Takin. Mm -hmm. Talks. I mean, that's the, the thing is having face-to-face -face communication oh, so that you can pick up on those micro expressions because that's where the triggers, the evidence of the trigger lies. Like you can catch it before it becomes a huge fight. Yeah, but I didn't see that becoming like a huge fight or anything. And I didn't see it because, again, I, I think if you kind of look at that clip out of context in what you said – it, I, I wouldn't, for lack of a better word, it's kind of horrific. I mean, it's not, that's just lack of a better word at this moment in time. But it's something where like, you know, out of context, you could look at that and go, geez. But in, in the context of what we were talking about at that time, like it completely makes sense. That's why I think I don't, I don't see what you're seeing. And, and I didn't, I didn't react in a way where I was like, wow, you know what I mean? Where it wasn't like the night before when you, which was, that was almost basically what you had said, but you were talking about, because just the way that my uh, comedy career has been progressing as of late is I'm, I'm looking at getting work in different areas now that's going to, you know, pull me away from you for short periods of time in the long run, short periods of time. I mean, you know, it's, eight or 10 days is a long time. Yeah. Uh, but, but I mean like in, in the long run over years and you know, how long we can be together. I mean, a couple of days here and there isn't the worst that even if it's like I were to bounce from gig to gig, I come back with some coin, you know what I mean? So by the end of the day. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like you're saying you're going to no. bounce from gig to gig. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Because I. Not at all. Now I'm starting to get like upset uh, even not. just thinking about this. So the conversation that we had had the mm. night before was I was, tell I was explaining to Chris how 
this whole time, I mean, he knew I kind of had one foot out of the relationship because yeah. I, uh, at the time that we met, I was like, I can't be with you as much as I wanted to and as attracted as I was, I saw myself married to a guy in his 40s who's settled and stable and boring and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's what I was looking for. And then I meet this guy who's a comedian in his 20s, traveling- Late 20s. Late 20s, traveling around and yeah, I mean, it was yeah. just a completely different lifestyle than what I was looking for. Um, and that's understandable, though. It's not that. And again, it's I don't I don't want to be pulled away from you for extended periods of time, which is why when I was talking with that agent, that's something that I specifically mentioned, because I, I mean, you mean so much to me that mm -hmm. it's this is where the man comes in i mean where it's like stop stop talking emotions <laughs> bottle that up push it down push it down it's is that a that 70s show where it's red goes what you do with your emotions is you, you shove it into a bottle and then the bottle comes back up and you shove the bottle back down <laughs> but but it's like you know you you, you just mean so much to me that it, it's it, it pains me to be on the road for extended periods of time. And I, I think because of my job, uh, you know, I'm, I may need to be away for at, at the most a, a couple weeks at a time. And I think that it that is something that we can handle. And I again, I totally understand your viewpoint, because like I said, that's how I feel as well is I don't want to be pulled away from you. You know what I mean? But, but it's like one of those things where when you had said, you know, if where you had said, oh, I figured like if, if that's what you were going to do, if that's you were going to be gone for a couple weeks, I'd just look for a new boyfriend. No, a couple months. I said a couple months. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I, I'm not planning on heading out for a couple months. And it's – and if if I was planning on – like if I ended up – getting a tour that was extended like that, at some point I'd make sure to come back in between times uh, just so I'm not actually gone for months at a time. Because I don't think, first of all, not only do I not think that that's not fair to you, I don't think that's fair to us as a couple. You know what I mean? So, but but it's like we're getting away from the point. Yeah, this is freaking me out because now I'm hearing you go away for a no, couple no, no, months no, no, and I not thought at all. that wasn't. Not at all. Again, I, I keep trying to mention okay. this. So I'm getting triggered right now here on the air. Um, so let's play a clip. So, yeah, um, we'll play Susan Campbell. So if you're just tuning in, uh, this is a recording. We, we recorded a couples therapy session with Dr. Susan Campbell, she is one of the co-authors of the book, Five Minute Relationship Repair, which is full of tools on how to um, cope with triggers that come up in the relationship. So I'm gonna play this clip and she's talking about how we need to nurture our inner child. And then I think she will, um, she's gonna walk us through the repair process as well. And if you want to watch the full interview, you can go to youtube.com forward slash spiritual show. And the name of the video is Couples Therapy Session with Susan Campbell. Five Minute Relationship Repair is the name of the book. And your, your parent doesn't know how to console you. So all of us got some kind of a message there, almost all of us, except the maybe most enlightened parents that our feelings were inconvenient for somebody, our upset feelings. So finding a partner who will do this work with you and all the way to the repair process, which is what we're gonna get to now, will heal your feelings that your emotions are a nuisance. Or if you're the other type, that when somebody else is upset with you, it doesn't mean I'm bad or wrong. They're hurting and I get to feel sorrow that I hurt them, not like guilty that I hurt them. Like, you know, 
I'm responsible, I'm to blame, you know, not to feel blamed. That's a, a really hard challenge. If somebody's upset with me, then I start to feel blamed. And are you telling me I'm not good or I'm bad or wrong? So we've, we've got all kinds of childhood stuff that we can heal. Mm -hmm. We really can. <laughs> this is the, so the, the repair statement is, let's say, let's pick one, one of your one of your reactive behaviors uh, to start with, Marie. Um, I guess there was there was a there wasn't a walking out really, but there was a um, a kind of getting off, kind of walking out digitally in the sense that you shut off your Facebook. And I don't know if that's if that's enough of a reactive behavior to want to redo. Or was there another one, like sometime when you really did walk out in the past? We'll just um, use some reactive behavior as a uh, example. Well, there's, I mean, I'm looking at the reactive behaviors, the leave, walk out, move away, uh, defend yourself, talk over the other and interrupt. She's got like all of them checked. I have like 80% <laughs> of these. I was, I was teasing. Um, interrogate, question, ask for explanation. Like it's just, um, yeah, I mean, it's a yeah. lot better now. But yeah, I, I did because when I, on the Facebook thing, like I shut down because I also knew mm -hmm. part of it was reactivity. And then a part of it was a little bit effective, I think, because I knew that the longer I sat there staring at the screen mm -hmm. waiting for a response, the more mm -hmm. escalated I was going to become. That's 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 wise then to change your change your scenery sometimes yes helpful. so it was i mean it was a reactive thing but it was mm -hmm. also because in the past instead of turning it off mm -hmm. my reactive thing would have been paragraph of yeah. why he's such a jerk for not responding immediately let's um, go to that let's go to that just because that's more typical as a reactive behavior from the the person who first who first gets triggered would be some let's call it some kind of criticism. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the criticism in this case will be you're a jerk, just or a passive aggressive mm -hmm. something like, well, I guess, mm -hmm. I guess that's it. I guess we're done, or something. I probably would have mm -hmm. said, yeah, I guess we're done. Yeah. Okay, either well, let's let let's take that one because that's probably even more common <laughs> for what human beings do nowadays in anger is, hey, we're done. So the repair statement has a bunch of fill in the blank sentences, which kind of prod you into making a vulnerable confession, a revision, and then a request. So first you say, I see now that when I said, and whatever your reactive behavior was like, we're done, I was triggered. It was probably my fear, and then we've got another blank, my fear of, and whatever the fear was, my fear that I'm not important to you coming out. That's the trigger. The trigger is always a fear, a story that confirms your worst fear. So like if it was Chris's case, you know, maybe uh, maybe he said some said something cold uh, so he'd say, you know, I'm I'm sorry. I said, well, that's it. Uh, you didn't deserve. Oh, the other part I like to add in is you didn't deserve that, and I'm so sorry I said it. That's not in the book, but I've added that mm -hmm. since. I think that really helps. And I I see now that it was probably my, you know, in Chris's case, like my fear of being wrongly accused, or my fear of not being enough, or my fear of feeling helpless some of those fears acting up. And then it's like, when I, when I heard you say nothing, you know, maybe in Marie's case, I didn't, when I didn't hear anything back from you, I told myself, and then she has a reactive story, I told myself I'm not important to you. So she's just, she's just kind of revealing to Chris what she's discovered about herself. This triggered feelings to, that are similar to old, you know, and then she can mention old memories when. We don't have to go to the old memories piece to do a good repair. Mm -hmm. But are there any old memories that you'd care to, to share that actually do get triggered from like childhood 
that you might sometime reveal to Chris to help um, him not take your reaction so personally? Yeah, I think, um, well, just before I do that, I just want to be mindful of the time. Um, mm. So in that clip, I was just about to share like this really sad tearjerker story from when I was four years old. Chris mm -hmm. said he's going to jump in, though. Well, I, I was just going to jump in and say that it's one of the things that they really push in five minute repair is that any type of strong emotional response to something usually stems from uh, something that happened in your childhood, be it a trauma or something along those lines, not always trauma, but you know, some feeling that you got from your childhood that extends into your adulthood because we are all products of our environment. So, I mean, that's realistically what we're, pretty much dealing with at the end of the day is we're dealing with each other's childhood emotions at that point and like trying to resolve issues that stem from that going on. So, I mean, realistically that, that fear of abandonment that we were talking about in that clip, which I, I mean, even in that interview, we kind of bounced from one thing to another because we, we were talking about one thing and then the thing that we ended up focusing on was talking about uh, how, I, well, I guess it was the same thing, how I just didn't respond to you on Facebook right away because I like, and again, from my side, it's like, I I didn't see it. So I, I didn't even have a chance to look at it. But from your side, it's, oh, he's not getting back to me. He's abandoned me. And that's something that stems from your childhood you know what i mean okay let me can i stop you for one second yep. it does like the the fear of abandonment does stem from my childhood mm -hmm. obviously but i think that that five minutes like that i send you a message and i don't hear back right away also stems from earlier in our relationship when we didn't you didn't want to stay into in communication there wasn't the same couple bubble mm -hmm. that we have now and you had yet to see the value in that and that's a fair point and, and i apologize and so then that. it was i mean the initial the the trigger of abandonment is from my childhood mm -hmm. but the association i have with you not being available for five minutes which seems to an outsider i mean even as i'm saying it it sounds completely ridiculous but what that is is a trigger of a memory from those times when i was begging you to like let's communicate about with about this and you wouldn't mm -hmm. so it wasn't i mean it was from the past but it wasn't just from the childhood issue yeah. it was a combination of our history and my history does that make sense yeah that makes sense is that mean to say or no i i think i mean i've grown so much as a person you have since we've been together that you're right yeah the, the, a, there is a good chunk of that that was probably caused by me and I, I mean that makes me feel horrible that sorry no but it's not it, it's just because like you know you, you never want to harm the people that you love so but that's why when that came up um, not this past weekend, but the weekend before mm -hmm. that, we on the interview, we were talking about this situation where I had reached out to you because I hadn't heard from you. And then I felt a little bit triggered. But the reason that I handled it well and just asked for what I needed yes. and I paused and I, even though I felt that abandonment when you didn't get back right away, I knew that that was my own issue. I knew that it wasn't anything to do with you not wanting to be there for me or not valuing me as a person. I knew because of the work that we've done that for me to fly off the handle or get angry about it would not, there would, it would be pointless. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly what I was talking about as well. When, if we go back to when I was saying how that one night that we were talking and you had mentioned that if you were gone for an extended period of time, I just look for a new guy then where that was me getting triggered because I know you were talk and and again, as I mentioned, I don't want to be away for any extended period of time. Uh, as I was mentioning though, it, is it's that triggered me in a sense that like, you know, I don't want to lose her, 
but I also recognize that you were talking about how much we've grown and how that's what your thought process was, you know, back even just a couple months ago, whereas like now it's, you know, there, there's a lot more patience between the both of us and there's, I, I mean, we're just such a stronger couple now. Yeah, thanks so, to Five Minute Relationship Repair yeah. and Dr. Stan Tatkin, yeah. for sure, who we're also going to be uh, interviewing next Wednesday on Google Hangouts on air, uh, but then we'll air the interview or at least part of it. Um, I think we only have a 30-minute interview, so we should be yeah. able to air the whole interview. And that's about his new book, Wired for Dating, which is going to be, uh, it just came out. So It's pretty good. It's good. Yeah, Have you read it? Yeah, you gave it to me for a little. Well, I skimmed oh, did through I give it, you the, but it's oh, okay. like cool. I skimmed through it enough to read parts that weren't in like Wired for Love, and like pause kind of here and there. And go, oh, what can I read here? But it, it's it's good. I I mean, that guy does some phenomenal work. Yeah, we like Dr. Stan Tekken. Okay, so we're going to play another clip from the interview. And this is when we talk about how quickly or slowly um, the two of us process emotions, which is something that Dr. Stan Tekken teaches. And again, this is an interview with Dr. Susan Campbell. She is the co-author of Five Minute Relationship Repair. And this is a clip from and, a couples therapy session. And just before we play that, I, I want to let the listeners know that this video is on Marie's YouTube channel, youtube.com slash spiritual show. And we are actually kind of jumping around in this interview uh, because we're just kind of cherry picking parts that we want to play. So, Yeah, because the interview is over an hour long. So we were kind of like, well, do we just cut off the end and say, uh, if you want to see the end, you got to go to YouTube or so we're just kind of doing this commentary. I think for a much more interesting show. So let's play that clip. All right. I mean, all of this emotional stuff, it happens so fast. It happens in real time. And we're on Facebook. That's, there's a delay. Yes. Um, and the nervous system moves very quickly. Yeah. And so Hers I'm, moves much faster than mine. Yes. Oh, much good, faster. Point. good point. And um, I'm a much faster processor. Mm -hmm. And so I'm already like, part of me, I'm kind of fighting with, okay, I know this is my issue, but I'm also experiencing these emotions that are real at the time. So I'm like, okay, um, I guess you're busy. And I'm already planning my exit strategy. Uh -huh. Well, if I don't hear from him, then I guess I'll just shut down. I won't speak with him and I'll find a new boyfriend tomorrow uh -huh. is basically where I go. Um, and yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah, so let's let's just pause right there just so we bring yeah. in the audience, which is <laughs> this is very, very common. As soon as we feel that painful trigger, we immediately want to take some kind of action. It's like then the controlling mind, you know, that's what I call it, the, the ego mind. It, it wants to protect you from any further harm. So it makes up, well, I've got, to, I've got to start shutting down, pulling away from my partner, ending the relationship, being less available. One of those kind of strategies. So I always, as a counselor, seeing this happen painfully over and over with couples is try to feel your feelings instead of thinking, what can I do to get away from this feeling? Mm -hmm. And I know you're working on that. Marie, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot better now than it was six or eight months ago, for mm -hmm. sure. But I mean, obviously, I'm still having that reaction, even though on the one hand, I'm knowing this is my issue. He has anything mm -hmm. wrong. I need to handle this effectively. Yeah. The other emotion mind part of me is like, if this doesn't work out, I still have an exit strategy. I still have to protect myself. And because I was at work, too. So I'm like, I can't allow myself to get being crying and all of that mm -hmm. so part of me is already like okay i, I have to protect myself how am i yes. going to protect myself so. yes so um we're back in the territory of reactive stories which is i have to protect myself and reactive behaviors which is logging off you know i am just going to cut off any possible hearing of bad news or feeling this anymore, something like that. So 
people at home, we have to own up to the fact that we do unfortunate reactive behaviors like running away or making up a story about our partner that is usually false. It's usually based on our worst fear. And that's, that's what triggers are for, to help us see our deeper fears so that we can befriend our fears and actually embrace that, kind of, we'll call it the shadow part of ourself, the hidden parts of ourself that we think would make us unlovable and actually love those parts ourselves. So I know Marie's been doing that work. But let's come back to, so Marie logs off. Chris, you said, okay, give me a minute, and you get no response probably. What happens then in your in your inner world, Chris? Uh, well, my inner world, I I wouldn't say I was, I was on, uh, you know, let's say DEFCON 3. <laughs> uh, not quite DEFCON 5, you know. <laughs> but, but at this point, I had already... Uh, I had already paused the video game. I had seen her response of, okay, well, I'm out. And I had already typed and hit, yeah, give me a second, I'll call you, and was searching for the phone. So, so mm -hmm. what was going on for you, though, as, like, I've left and said, well, obviously you're busy, frowny face, so mm -hmm. you know I'm escalated now. So what was happening for you emotionally? I, I think, you know, I didn't even think about it at that point in time. And it wasn't even anything that was really occurring to me. It was I, like at that point, I knew for sure, okay, there's something that needs to be fixed. And I was I was on it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, so Chris got to speak for an entire what 30 seconds out <laughs> of that whole clip. <laughs> I, I think it's fair to say that there was way too much estrogen in that interview. Don't give me that look because how I'm trying to bring humor right now and you're just looking at me like I, I'm an awful misogynist, which is not, you know, that's not true. All right. I joke around about some cheese. All right. <laughs> leaving the studio. That's, what? No, no I'm not going to leave the studio. <laughs> That'd be hilarious if I did, though. No, I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> you, he's, you know why he's trying to make an excuse to leave the studio? So There's he can a go dog out pet there the that dog pet. that's outside. Okay, go. No, 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 not at all. I'm fine. He wants to say hi to DJ Chris Horrific came in a little while ago into the station. He's been trying to get Chris Horrific's attention. And now there's a dog, and I just know. Yeah, but you know that we say that he's going to hear that it's somewhere in this studio and, like, rushing, hey, how's it going? And, you know, we'll be mid-sentence. Like, no, that's okay. He's probably in, a, in one of the like studios the say that. prepping his show. Yeah, probably. Is. Yeah. I, but I, I know you want to go pet that dog. That. Yeah, it's, I think, is that dog? I don't even think that dog's still there. The dog is still oh, is there. It? I've got my eye on it right now. Oh, okay. We love dogs. He's yes. so cute. All right, well... Uh, no, I, I was I was kind of joking around it because you had mentioned like, wow, you ladies really didn't give me that much time to talk. Which, but I, I mean, like I said heading in, it's the same thing that I said earlier on in the show today is that we were kind of focusing on uh, your issue at the moment. You know what I mean? So it wasn't something like I I was just there to help out. Maybe we always if focus that. on my <laughs> <laughs> That is not true. That isn't true. Uh, and, and it's like, you know, the amount that you've helped me, like, I'm so grateful for that as well. So it, it's you, you can't actually say that. I'm going to save that clip next time I'm in trouble. And I'm going to play it to you. Okay. Of you saying how grateful you are. Oh. Well, I, even if you were in trouble, I'm still very grateful. I know. I'm just teasing you. Of you. So mm -hmm. quit. <laughs> mm. That's me being why, why, radio clean right there. Uh, it's thank like you. seven things that I wanted to say. I appreciate you <laughs> keeping it radio safe. We are um, playing some clips right now. If you're just tuning in, uh, I'm Marie Bernard. 
we were speaking with my boyfriend, Chris Gaskin, and we're sharing our take on the couples therapy session we did on Google Hangouts on Air, which it, you can, if you want to watch the whole interview or the whole couples therapy session, you can go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash spiritual show. Or you can just go into YouTube and punch in couples therapy session with Susan Campbell. Five Minute Relationship Repair is the name of the book. Susan Campbell is one of the co-authors. And so she helped us work through some tools. And and when Susan had offered um, that session to us, that was probably about six months ago when things were really rough. Yeah. And then you had actually agreed to do the session, which I was blown away. I was like, because she'd offered to do a session on YouTube with us. And um, I asked you if you were willing. And you said, did you just turn this to it? Yeah. No, I don't want to be on camera. Uh, (laughs) We're also recording this for uh, YouTube right now. We're recording our discussion and we'll post it. Maybe we might post it. We might not. Probably not. now I lost my train of thought, babe. So, so we she had asked, okay. she'd offered the session. You had said, yes, you would do it. But at mm-hmm. the time, I think we really would have benefited from it. But our relationship was so rocky. I didn't want to put you out there publicly. Well, at, at the time, I don't think we were in as much of a rough patch as you say. I think, you know, our relationship was definitely rocky at the time. Whereas, you know, it's. It's been very solid as of late, which I am like, again, I'm very grateful for that. Uh, but but like, yeah, at the time it was a little rocky. I don't think it was like we weren't really in a rough patch at the time. And I but I had no problem saying yes to that because I mostly I thought uh, it would make good content for your radio show Mm -hmm. and any way that I could help out and support with something like that, that I'm always willing to do. But that's most of the time willing to do. (laughs) But I mean, I just was so blown away Mm -hmm. by your willingness to do that because I, you're, I mean, even though you're up on stage doing comedy, you are a very private person about your personal life. Yeah. And I do, I do talk about my personal life from time to time when I'm on stage, but it's, you know, and it's not that I, I don't hide a lot, but I, I do like my private life to be private. I, I, I want that to be a little bit different. And it, it's, I mean, it's tough when, you know, you're doing podcasts and that, but it, it's like, you know, I, I almost look at someone like, Joe Rogan, who like that guy talks about everything, but that dude's private life is his private life. I mean, when he talks about his wife on his podcast, he doesn't really get into what they're doing or what's going on, but he'll mention, and he'll call her specifically Mrs. Rogan on the podcast. So you don't even get like her first name or anything. And that's kind of how like I, to me, privacy isn't like you know how people get crazy over privacy online to me i i'm not i'm fine with that you know what i mean like when people are like ah oh, they can get your email on facebook and i'm like yeah, how do you think they're advertising to you already like they're yeah the record that doesn't bother me as much but it, it's like i i think it's mostly because i don't want people around me meddling in my affairs I think that's really what it is. And it's, I totally understand. And it was one of the things that I had spent quite a while trying to explain to you that like, listen, I, I really, really, really like you. I go, and I know you like me and I I know you don't want to really date me that much. But if we move forward, like dating a comedian can be tough. And I, I've never, I've never lied about that. I've never said, oh, it's, it's going to be easy. It's going to be, you know, so it, it, it's something that I just like my privacy there because I know, you know, comedians like to bust chops. So it's like, like, I, I remember one time uh, when we were in Calgary, one of the <laughs> comics came up and said, and it was horrific. 
And I I think she was just trying to bust chops, but what she said was really mean. And you were like, what the what like how well, you were say? stunned you it, were oh, in I was silence, stunned myself and i, I looked like, at her geez. and i said that was really bleeping rude yeah yeah it was i mean she was lucky that i didn't that i'm not a physically <laughs> a violent, violent person. person because i could have ripped her the skin We're off all of her face violent. for what she said like it was brutal i can't believe i just said that on the radio but like yes. what she said and it and it wasn't just that it was the venom the venomous tone yeah, that she said it. I mean, she might have been joking, but whatever. Anyway, I'm not going to. No, no, no. I don't want to think about that person we're, because we're I only topic. have yeah, bad yeah, yeah. things to say. Fair enough. So let's but go. The, the point that I was trying to make, though, is because of stuff like that, I, I like to be more of a private person. Yeah. Which is why, like I said, I, I, I do get a bit trepidatious about doing stuff like that this because it does put us out there yeah for so let's stop talking like now then because i'm getting really escalated oh, okay. just bringing like that that story about that calgary situation mm -hmm. brought me right back to that moment and it was a really unsafe moment so let's uh move on but anyway and i want to apologize for the comment that i made if i offended anyone uh on who's listening or driving with kids or anything like that um my apologies for that. And we're going to play uh, another clip. And Susan is, we're just about to wrap up in a few minutes here on CITR. Coming up next is Parts Unknown with DJ Chris Arific. So stick around for that. And Susan is going to talk about um, the higher purpose of her book. Is... Five minute relationship, relationship repair. repair, and my co author is John Gray. And it starts with the neurobiology of love and then goes through all the emotional parts of love. And really, I think in the end, it shows you how love can transport you to a place where you're not so identified with protecting your ego, but really become a we really join with another person and that I think helps us prepare ourselves for a life of joining with others in a cooperative way without being afraid of our differences. So this is a laboratory for learning how to love somebody who's very different from you. That's what relationships are and the planet needs that right now. We Absolutely. need to learn to deal with people who we perceive as very different from us. So peace on earth. That's really our mission here. Absolutely. Um, again, so it's five minute relationship repair is the name of the book. Um, five minute relationship repair.com is the website. And with five being a word. Not five F I V E. Yeah. And then my, my website's susancampbell.com spelled like Campbell soup. And I have lots of other products. Like I have a couple of card games that, partners or families can play. Did you guys ever see those card games? No, they, we love oh, card games. Oh, they are fabulous. There's the getting real card game and the truth in dating card game. There's even a truth at work card game for work teams mm -hmm. to help people learn to communicate with more trust and openness and and vulnerability in a, in a fun way, you know, making it fun. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Cool. Gotta check My out. website has that. That's the SusanCampbell.com website. Great. Check, and Check it out. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I will post the link. Uh, I'll put the down there. Susan's website right and down. five minutes relationship repair under in the below in the description. Yeah, that's the word for it. In Thank the description. you. So you can visit there. And um, and of course, do you do sessions like like I, this, do, like I do couples coaching by Skype or telephone, and I also do workshops regularly. So if you go to SusanCampbell.com, you'll see a way to subscribe to my newsletter, and then you'll hear about, I do couples workshops on this material, and also on uh, the 10 truth skills that people need to live an authentic life. So I'm author of another book and a series of books about getting real. So it's basically about how to how to be honest in the most difficult of situations. 
Um, so yeah, if you are in a relationship, if you want to be in a relationship, I mean, even great relationships have room for, for growth. Um, but this has been not only our relationship, but just our own personal individual Mm -hmm. lives. We're just such stronger people in the world. And it really does have a ripple effect on the rest of the planet. And, um, so yeah, check it out. (laughs) And thanks for the great show that you're doing. It's a great service. And to both of you today for bringing your life here and showing us all that it's possible. Yay. Okay, so that was pretty much the end of the interview there. So if you want to see it, you can go to I put a link up in the uh, the podcast page for today. So you can go to citr.ca and look up synchronicity if you want the link to the rest of the interview on video. And up next in just a moment here on CITR is Parts Unknown with DJ Chris Arific. And he is he's here. He's just waiting on bated breath to shout out Namaste. <laughs> no. Uh, no, no. <laughs> wow, he was super excited to do that. That's He's you ready. Know, we didn't take my suggestion and this guy this guy's hyped. He's ready to say it. <laughs> All right. Could have lit up the other microphone, had a nice Lots two second love. conversation. See, he's ready. He's, ready. he's, he's ready. so ready. Okay. I, then I need you to You're killing me. Over here. I love you. <laughs> All right. So uh, we'll be back next week with more synchronicity. And I hope you have a wonderful week. Be well. I love you so much. Namaste. Woo! Namaste.